Here in part 14, with a combination of our author Kurt's diary to gain detail, a report by his superiors to give context, and a situational map to give an overview, we'll touch on the pivotal experiences which cause the SS Reich Division's youthful feelings of insecurity to dissipate as the unit came into its own to become a truly elite fighting force. At the end of this video, we'll see more from the training film, Digging In Under Fire, so stick around. It's worth it. The last time we were with Kurt, it was July 26th, 1941, and the SS Division Reich had just finished fighting its first defensive battle at Yelnia. He described how an unlucky enemy artillery round had landed directly in a foxhole, instantly killing Sergeant Stepanek and three members of a mortar crew. Kurt had been blown off his feet by the explosion, but had escaped uninjured. Seeing the terrible fate of these men, Sergeant Siegfried Weiher's body shook in horror, and he was in shock. Kurt continues, Ich halte seine Hände und spreche. I hold his hands and speak to him in a calm voice for a few minutes until he is able to pull himself back together. He sits apathetically at the edge of the foxhole. The sight of the destroyed mortar position also causes my blood to run cold. Our four men, the mortar, and all the equipment is nothing but a formless, bloody mess. SS Sergeant Weihea will be brought with his men to operate at another location on the front. Determined, after an hour to collect himself, he reports back to duty. The incomparable levels of duty and loyalty of our men during the heavy combat is best represented by the following report to the Corps dated August 10th of 1941. From the leadership of the Combat Command Post, Order of the Day number 5. After heavy defensive combat to the northeast of Yelnia, the 1st SS Motorcycle Battalion that had been ordered to defend the left flank of the company and being led by Forster was found in this manner. Sergeant Forster, the group leader, was found gripping the pin of his last hand grenade, shot to the head. Machine Gunner 1, SS Corporal Kleiber, was found with his MG still to his shoulder with a bullet in the chamber, shot to the head. Machine Gunner 2, SS Private First Class Bushna, and Machine Gunner 3, SS Rifleman Steima, were found dead in their foxholes. Motorcycle Messenger SS Private First Class Older Boschula was found dead on his motorcycle, his hands on the handlebars, about to deliver his last message. Motorcyclist SS Private Schwenk was found dead in his foxhole. All that remained of the enemy were dead bodies strewn around the defensive position in the form of a half circle, a hand grenade throw away. This is the definition of the term defense. We are proud to witness the evidence of such heroism and have asked that these names be added to the Ehrenblatt des Heeres. Note, right after the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Hitler introduced in July of 1941 the Ehrenblatt des Heeres, which was an official journal listing the names of soldiers showing exceptional personal bravery. It's not clear whether these soldiers were awarded this honor. Here, we're looking at the official war atlas of the German High Command for Operation Barbarossa. This is a situational map for July 26th, specifically Army Group Center. The SS Division Reich is operating just north of the 10th Panzer Division at Yelnia. The city, specifically the heights just to the east, were of considerable strategic importance, and both the Germans and the Soviets understood that. Only about 300 miles from Moscow, the heights looked down at what can be considered the approach towards the Soviet capital. After the taking of Smolensk, 
occupying these heights was considered Army Group Center's most important task. Kirk continues, Azonsa Divisions Commandua. When our divisional commander issued the order to prepare defensive positions, he knew how difficult the tasks in front of us would be. Only troops with the highest morale and the strongest will would be capable of success, and we didn't disappoint him. We stormed the enemy positions and then managed to hold them. The hero song from Yelnia has become our battle song to get sung in the most difficult of situations. From now on, with us, death has lost its terror. In part 15 of this series, we'll look at an article that digs deeper into the details of the Battle of Yelnia and its importance. If you like content like this, made with primary historical sources, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. To see exclusive film footage that can't be shown here, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. And now, here's more of the original 1943 training film, Digging In Under Fire. Richtig angelegtes LIG-Nest, aber sieht so aus. Hier sind Geschütz, Mannschaft und Munition gesichert. Kommt das feindliche Feuer näher, kann sich die Mannschaft leicht in Sicherheit bringen. Eine 3,7 cm Pack wird im Unterstellraum eingegraben. Der Geschützführer sucht einen Wald, der 500 Meter entfernt liegt, mit seinem Glas ab und erkennt, wie ein feindliches SMG in Stellung geht. Hallo! Das vernichtete Feind-SMG. Die Pack wird wieder in den Unterstellraum gefahren. Jetzt ist sie aber vom Feind erkannt und wird durch Artillerie bekämpft. der Packbedienung war richtig. Die Schanzarbeit musste unterbrochen und das Feind-MG niedergekämpft werden, selbst auf die Gefahr hin, dass die Pack vom Feind erkannt wird. 